Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Monarch. I know, crazy. I just did a video yesterday on the Monarch. You see, you guys seem to enjoy that. And I told you guys that I had another video uh, from the same night of, of running in the Monarch. So here it is. I wasn't lying. Uh, this one is going to be quite exciting. Uh, it's going to showcase the Monarch in... Um, one of the rules that, while it is fun to play, probably not going to uh, be where you want to be in the Monarch most of the time. And we'll go over why once we get there. But we're on Trident. I know. Trident's one of those matches. I really enjoy this map. I really do. I think Trident is one of those maps that is just really, really good. Uh, no matter where you spawn on this map, I feel like you got pretty good options of what you want to do. So, I think Trident's one of the better design maps in World of Warships in general. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, also, just as a heads up, I will be ending up uh, streaming on Wednesday a little bit earlier um, because I will have to do my gym workout on Wednesday instead of Thursday because I will be leaving Thursday to drive 15 and a half hours down to Bradenton, Florida. Now here we see a Tirpitz over the middle of the map, so we go ahead, auto-lock over the island. Hopefully we hit him. We're not really crazy about it. We just want to get a shot out early, right? And we get rewarded with 4,300 damage. Not a lot. Just keeping our eyes downrange, right? Now here we have an enemy Hawk, and anytime I see a broadside British battlecruiser, I am salivating. Hawk especially, because it does have that raised That's citadel. Me. So if we can get a good shot on him, um, we know we're gonna chunk him. Now here you can see I'm trying to lock onto the Roma here with the rear turret. Uh, one of the things that I see a lot of people just don't do very well is pay attention to your rear firing arcs. A lot of times people just never end up using the rear gun when they're in a bow tanking position because they're not paying attention to the fact the rear gun could shoot at other people. There we slap the crap out of the Prince Heinrich. Now keep an eye on what that guy's gonna do. We need to pay attention to him, right? Now here you can see once again we have the rear turret ready to fire, so we go ahead and take that shot at the enemy turpits. Now again, what you're going to see is pretty pretty uh, inconsistent guns out of the Monarch, which is something we talked about yesterday. We are not running an accuracy build. We're running Azure Lane Nelson. Uh, we do not run the big 7 skill on our AP-centric uh, British battleships, but uh, what we do have is a really fast reload. Uh, now, if you wanted to, you could actually slap the uh, epic reload mod on this thing, too, and you'd be reloading even quicker um, than I am in this one. I think I, I start out, my, my reload is around 21 seconds. You can see Osterjotland gets spotted, so we go ahead and start targeting him with uh, the front guns. We hit him a little bit, rear guns, we take the shot. I think he slows down here and avoids our shot, um, which is unfortunate, but he does get a fire on us, so we go ahead and reach out, touch him with the front guns again. I think he's going to get in reverse, but notice the Prince Heinrich is starting to charge. Now, why would a, why would a German battlecruiser come out into the open like this, uh, broadside to my location? Anybody? Anybody got any ideas? It's pretty obvious that he's trying to torp us. Now, remember, the British, or not the British, I keep saying the British, the German battlecruiser torpedoes are extremely slow. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I about got caught once again by these stupid slow torpedoes. It gets me every time. And I say almost, I actually do get caught here. He does catch me. Uh, but these torpedoes are so slow that they, they lull you into a sense of security like, oh, we clearly didn't launch his torps, and then you run right into him. Every time. How many times have I been caught? How many times have you guys seen me get caught by br or of these stupid German torpedoes? You would think that I would have a pretty good idea when they're coming, but it's just like they hold out just long enough for you to go, oh yeah, he clearly didn't launch him. They would have been here by now. No, always assume that they have been launched and that they are just taking 10 minutes to get to you. Uh, it's almost like Italian torpedoes in that sense. Like they are very slow and they will always, always, always catch you off guard. Now here we get a very accurate salvo. We're aiming superstructure upper side plating another 12k. You can see that when these things are accurate uh, you can do some serious damage pretty easily on pretty much everything. Now Hawk spamming HE at us again like I'm sorry Hawk. Learn to use some AP my guy. You've got very good guns. Uh, as we showcase the Hawk is a very capable battle cruiser. Look at that accuracy though. You know that's going to slap and bonk Another 16k damage. See what I'm saying? 
The armor piercing is no joke. Yeah, he's over angled and I'm over angled to him. If he loaded AP, he could slap me as well. But here, here's gonna be the problem with this ship. And that is AA or lack thereof. Now, on paper, this thing looks like it's got decent AA, but in reality, the AA is very ineffective. I don't know why, but it just is. Now, the Orkin is rushing us, so we have to keep that in mind, and we get dropped by the Shokaku and lose a third of our hit points with one torpedo strike. Not ideal. And what did we get in return? Overpins. And how many planes do we shoot down? Two. So, in my experience with the Monarch, this thing really does struggle against carriers. It just does not do very well. We're going to go ahead and hit our super heal. And look, once again, we hit him. We get two penetrations, one overpin. Don't manage to kill him. Don't manage to citadel him. I don't understand it. I, I truly don't. I don't know if it's because they're short fuse armor piercing or what, but I just cannot ever seem to do like the big hits on carriers with these things. Uh, tried to get the thread the needle shot through the island here. We know the hawk is going to come over towards us. We know he has torpedoes. We were just trying to get a cheeky shot through the island. Uh, we're slowing down. We don't want to put ourselves between the hawk and the uh, Massachusetts who is coming back. We also know that the Shokaku is out here, so we're going to once again take a shot at him. Before he gets away, we want to get as many hits as possible, so we start aiming up a little bit higher to just get as many shells on target as possible. We get a much better result that time, three full penetrations, but once again, we've got a whole bunch of torpedoes heading in our direction from this carrier. The Hawk does manage to take a torpedo. Uh, as much as I want to focus the Hawk, I'm figuring, okay, he's probably getting, you know, taken out pretty soon anyway. He comes around the corner, firing HE still, thank goodness. If he had AP loaded, he would neuter us. But because he doesn't, uh, we actually end up taking more damage from the Massachusetts, who is off our bow, shooting our superstructure, than we take from a broadside and a Hawk. Like, come on. You gotta, you gotta do better, Hawk. Learn to use armor piercing, folks. It is a thing. You are allowed to use it. You can switch between ammo types. I know it's crazy. I tend to stay on one ammo type, usually armor piercing. But uh, yeah, you definitely got to learn to switch back and forth. Now, Shokaku, unfortunately, still alive. We knew torpedoes would be on their way, so we have to try to get away. Unfortunately, we mistimed the uh, shot from this uh, Massachusetts, and we pay the price for it. Massachusetts, very nasty. We've talked about this before. Very, very good battleship. Now here he gets another shot out. We're already turning into this, so I'm hoping that we don't take any damage. And we take one overpin to the superstructure. Getting our bow into this guy, we're gonna aim high, try to hit the superstructure. Um, just try to whittle this guy down as best we can. You can see we are shooting down some fighter jets, or fighter planes. Um, but unfortunately, why did they put those fighter planes down right there? To eat up our AA while they drop bombs on our head and get permafires. Um, that is the that is the downside. So our play our AA almost always shoots down the uh, the fighters, but never om almost never shoots down the actual bombers. Uh, that was a terrible accuracy shot on the Massachusetts, and you can see I'm uh, assuming that I'm pretty much dead here. So I'm just trying to like I don't know do something to make this guy miss. Uh, but he's doing very well at aiming high, getting into my superstructure. He's not falling for the bait of shooting at the belt. Remember, this thing has ridiculously good belt armor. Now, we get accuracy out the wazoo on that shot. All three shells manage to hit, and then we fire the rear turret, and look at how accurate that is. You can't argue with that kind of accuracy, man. Another 4K, another three hits, all three overpens there, hitting the superstructure. Now, we only have 2,300 hit points left. We have 30 seconds until the next heal. I am just like, oh God, I've got to try to survive here. Fortunately, he ends up overleading I didn't realize I was slowing down. I'm trying to stop before the island. And uh, he gets a shot. Fortunately, the one shell that does hit us hits right into the turrets. I'm like, oh my god, are we actually going to get a chance to, to survive long enough to get this heal? Now, this is where that epic uh, reload mod would have come in handy. Because I would have had a couple of more shots on this guy by this point. Uh, we would have had a reload of somewhere in the 18 second mark by this point. We get our heal off and unfortunately pull up just enough to get clapped by the Roma. Uh, from across the map, which I didn't realize had a shot at us. But uh, 159,000 damage. We got three enemies left. The Massachusetts, we took most of his health. All of our battleships that are left are full health because they ain't done nothing, let's be real. The uh, Bismarck and the, uh, was it the Roma? 
Amagi. Bismarck and Amagi on our side literally sat in the back and watched us just neuter everybody for the entirety of the match. They've got all their hit points. They should be having no trouble finishing this off, right? So the enemy Shokaku's down. The enemy's destroyer needs to recognize that, hey, all I have to do is run away. Now, he's spotted by the carrier right now, but there's nobody around to shoot him. So it's going to come down to whether or not he tries to disengage from the carrier. And remember, winning harder almost always ends badly, right? You don't want to be the person to throw the game when you have the lead. You just don't. And this destroyer and this Roma should have recognized this. Uh, they should have just backtracked. Our, our carrier is nowhere near a cap. There's five minutes left. By the time our carrier gets near a cap to potentially cap it, he's already lost, right? The battleships, same thing. Our battleships are nowhere near the fight. Our destroyer went all the way out to kill their carrier, so he's going to take a while to get back. By the time he gets into a cap, it's basically over. Because it takes a, roughly, a, what, a minute and a half to to capture a base, right? So um, it's, it's just one of those situations where you got to recognize when you have the advantage and you've got to disengage. And the Oster Yotland has fantastic AA for a destroyer, but the problem is he doesn't have to uh, be killed by the, the carrier if he keeps getting himself spotted. And so he needs to just turn around and disengage. There's no, there's no shame in disengaging to, to secure the win. And I don't know why people just refuse to do it, but they do. And this is going to be no exception. They have over 100 points of, uh, it's like a 130 point lead at this point. And they have two caps. And like I said, the timing of this, you have to recognize when you don't have the time. Uh, carrier failing to tor or failing to land on the uh, Osteolan. Our Osteolan almost walks right into these torp. That was almost B E A beautiful. The Osteolan about absolutely neutered him. Sad part is those were actually meant for the uh, battleship behind him, and will likely end up landing on the battleship despite being spotted very early. Destroyer gets into the cap. Carrier's still trying to torp uh, and, and attack the Ostriotland. And again, I don't know why this guy is challenging the carrier directly here. Just run away, man. That's all you have to do. He takes some torps from the carrier, and our Ostriotland is going to be able to reach out and help finish him off. Battleship also doing their part to land some shots, and there down he goes. Then that brings us to the full health Bismarck, who's getting in a fight with Aroma, and uh, he's just... I don't know. This Roma did not have any hit points, right? Like, this guy has healed a little bit back one way or another. The Bismarck showcasing the Bismarck in its full accuracy build. Now, how I know this? Because the secondaries aren't firing yet, and they're eight kilometers away. So this is the best accuracy you can ever get out of a Bismarck, right? In theory. But uh, the Roma is actually punishing this Bismarck. And now Roma goes full broadside, which is just the death sentence. You can't do it. I don't care how much hit points you have, and I don't care if you're up against a Bismarck or not. And that was accurate as crap for a Bismarck. That was very good accuracy there to finish off the Roma. But our Bismarck managed to trade half his hit points to take away like a full 5,000, maybe 7,000 hit points off the Roma. But 159,000 top of the leaderboard, no, no surprise there. Um, we did everything we had to do. It was very exciting, pushing up into the cap pushing our advantage uh, if we'd have got a little bit or a little bit of extra support from the uh, battleships behind us instead of watching us uh, battle everything we probably survived that match but uh, a couple of misplays by me in there as well getting caught broadside to the Massachusetts losing what was it 12 15k in the one salvo um, but overall it was a fun match let me know what you guys think down in the comments below uh, have you tried out the monarch recently and if you have let me know and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.